Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message on striving to be the kind of mother that God has called you to be. On striving to be the kind of mother that God has called you to be. Some mothers have prayed and asked the Lord if he could please provide the guidance, the instruction on being a better mother. I remember when I felt so moved to write the book, When Mothers Cry. I wrote it because I knew that God was moving on my spirit in a great and mighty way to share all of the struggles in plain speech, as well as the solutions into solving many of the struggles of being a mother, a mother with a lot of challenges. And in that book, that's what I share with you quite candidly. We're going to take a look at the scriptures today on motherhood, and we're going to make sure that we are doing the best that we possibly can to be the kind of mothers that God has called us to be. So let us kick this message off with Proverbs 31, 25 through 30. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. What does this look like when we are striving to be better mothers? First of all, a mother who wants to be better is looking for things that strengthen her mentally and physically, okay? She has to be strong in mind and body to be able to parent children. Mothers who have fallen by the wayside know all too well what it feels like to be weak in mind and body and not quite there for children. She's also seeking strength spiritually. She's got her share of prayer warriors who she can call on to pray for her. She's also listening to all sorts of wisdom as the Lord leads to provide her with the spiritual nourishment that she needs to get through another day. She's also dressed in a way that is dignified, the kind of dress that isn't, a, that isn't embarrassing to her children, that doesn't raise up all sorts of insecurity in her husband. She is working, saints as well as sinners, to be the kind of woman that she wants God to say that you have done well, my good and faithful servant. She wants eternal life. There are those individuals that trust in the Lord. They have great faith, but they're not willing to obey the Lord. They want to just sit back and say, it is just my faith and only my faith. But God speaks and he moves on us to listen and obey. There is instruction that needs to be listened to when it comes to the one true God. This mother who is walking with the one true God isn't worried. She spends her time laughing about things. Sometimes there are those individuals who you will see something about them where they're quite content, even though the rest of us might be fearful, worried about things. They're laughing because they know their God. They know what God can do. She also seeks wisdom. She wants wisdom to come out of her mouth. She doesn't want curse words and insults. She's had enough of that. She's fed up with it. She doesn't want gossip and lies coming out of her mouth. 
She may have people around her who are corrupt, but she is working on getting those people out of her life. She wants to teach her children kindness. And so this is why she doesn't put just anyone around her children. She knows that they're going to be exposed via media and she knows that they're going to be exposed at school. But when they are in her presence, this being mean spirited, impolite is not allowed. She doesn't allow that sort of thing for herself. Why would she allow that for her children? She doesn't have time, oftentimes, to be concerned about other people's households. Matter of fact, God hasn't called her to be concerned about other people's households unless that is her profession. You see, she looks well to the ways of her household. She is managing finances. She might be shopping for the household, not only shopping, but also cooking and creating lists to replace household items. She also is helping others out with errand running, organizing and cleaning. She has her share of responsibilities and the mother or grandmother who doesn't understand that because she can't call back, because she can't write, because she can't come around when they want and how they want can be an obstacle, can be a distraction and God can create divisiveness. Be mindful of what you say to your daughter, to your granddaughter. She has her household that she has to manage as well. Sometimes these, dare we say it, mature mothers and grandmothers, they have the bread of idleness that is going on with them. In other words, they don't have the type of time filled up, if you will, to keep them from being idle. They retired into idleness. They retired into gossip and lies. They retired into changing family history to suit themselves. Too much time is on a mother or grandmother's hands. And so she is not called to be corrupted by these women. And so over time, God will create distance. Her children rise up and they call her blessed. If she is walking in the way of the Lord, her children are going to speak blessings over her life. They're going to speak positively when she is not walking according to the will of the Lord. Her children curse. They say things behind her back or to her face. Her husband may not even like her very much and may have contemplated on divorcing her. Is that what some of you all want? Of course not. The way to being a righteous mother is in the scripture, saints. Take the time out and pray and ask the Lord to guide you in all your ways. You are to lean on him and not on your own understanding. We train up children in the way that they should go. Proverbs 22 6 reminds us train up a child in the way he should go even when he is old he will not depart from it how much time are you training a child to act in the way of the Lord when you honor your father when you honor your mother as the scripture reminds us, our days are long in the land. But we also have to realize that there are those who they did do just that. But unfortunately, they left this earth for reasons that only God knows far too soon. But there were those who left this earth because they were dishonoring of a father and of a mother prematurely. Exodus twenty twelve. Moving on, Psalm one twenty seven three Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruits of the womb a reward. 
I wrote When Mothers Cry, and some individuals, I know me, I was challenged on all sides with regard to motherhood. And there were times where I didn't see that. I didn't see the heritage from the Lord. I didn't look at my womb as being a, the fruit, a reward. But God reminds us that that is what he did. Even when those that impregnated us did not like or love us, God said, I gifted you these children. Hallelujah. I gifted you these children. They are a heritage. And if you train them up in the way they should go, if you teach them accordingly, if you lead by example, they are going to be a blessing. I promise you, says the Lord, and not a curse. But you got to hold on to the Lord. You've got to continue to walk with him. You've got to trust in him. Someone says, I don't know love because love wasn't shown to me. I was taught all the wrong things about love. Can I tell you that you can do all the right things concerning love? It is right there in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Love is patient and kind. That is what you are doing when you are patient and kind toward your children, toward your spouse. Love does not envy or boast. When you resisted the temptation to be envious, to be boastful on the internet, off the internet, Lord Jesus, you show love. When you weren't arrogant and rude like your predecessors to store clerks, Lord Jesus, to customer service reps, to your fellow family members and friends, to the women in the civic group, at the sisterhood, Lord Jesus, you showed love. When you didn't insist on your own way at the workplace. When you didn't insist on your own way with your spouse, even though secretly you may have felt like your own way was the right way. And sometimes they do learn the hard way. <laughs> but you didn't insist on your own way. You showed love when you weren't irritable, even though, yes, some. Um, Women going through their share of menstrual cycles, others going through perimenopause, menopause. And you fought through that thing and you've got your various supplements and your prescription medicines and so forth. You didn't act irritable. You didn't act resentful about some things because the holidays came and nobody thought about me and all that. Come on now, you show love. You see, love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. God showed me in the spirit, though, that for the woman who has been emotionally and or physically abused in her household, that is not love. That is not love. And there is a way of escape. There are exit plans. There are resources. And you do your due diligence and you get out of that thing that somebody tricked you into, persuaded you, forced you into, brainwashed you, manipulated you into saying that it's love. It is not. There are many wayward believers weak in the faith, lukewarm Christians who have called emotional, physical, and spiritual abuse love, and it is not. Someone is hindering a mother from being a good mother because of their lies, because of their confusion, because they aren't mentally sound. They haven't healed spiritually, emotionally, physically and they're going out here and they're telling people things that are incorrect so you have to mind you have to mind who you listen to be more cautious some of these individuals know not what they teach or preach lord jesus the mother who is wanting to be the best mother possible you know that 
There are times where you are going to have to say things to children and discipline and provide consequence just as our father has done. Proverbs 29, 15 tells you that. For the grandmother who, you know these things, but yet you don't exemplify these things and you fall short. Or maybe you know of a grandmother that is that way. There are times where we cannot listen to the grandmother because of her own challenges that she has yet to overcome. But be reminded though, Proverbs 17, 6, that grandchildren are the crown of the aged. And the glory of children is their fathers. So just because that one doesn't like or doesn't want to be around a grandchild does not make that any less of a blessing. Hallelujah. Because God, he can raise up substitute grandmothers and grandfathers. And if somebody doesn't want that, then I suggest that you step up to the plate and exhibit the kind of grandmother traits that God wants you to have. And you find that in the word of God and you find that in praying with him and you find it in your study and your seeking Everything that you choose, that you want to have. I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for sending many of you all to this message during a time where many mothers are expecting some type of honor and there are many mothers who are not getting that in the way they should. Or in the way they feel even. Because God has something to do with that. I know for some people they're like, oh, that's a lot (laughs) to take in. But God does do that. He will block some things because some mothers put themselves on the throne and kick God off. And some mothers are prideful and arrogant. And once again, the scripture warned us about that. Some mothers are liars and drunkards and whores. There are some mothers who are sexually immoral, some mothers who are participating in their share of orgies. There are mothers who are doing some of the most wicked things. And so, no, there is no honor. And there are some mothers who we know that they're doing all these things and they're still getting what appears to be honor. But the Lord says that there is consequences that are coming. There is a reaping season that's coming to the mother who has not exhibited the kind of mother mothering that she should have. Those skills, those traits, where are they, oh mother? You see? So there is a rebuke for those who are living unrighteously, unholy, while they're making all sorts of excuses for their unholiness. You see, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, Galatians 5.22. And if you don't see that, not just in a mother, but in any person, then that is not a person that you want to learn from. Yes, we are all going to fall short at times, but we get back up again, don't we? Hallelujah. We get back up again. We give all acknowledgement to the one true God for helping us back up on our feet during times where we didn't show love, where we weren't joyful, where we weren't peaceful, where we weren't patient, where we weren't kind, where we weren't exhibiting goodness or faithfulness. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us right now. No one is perfect but the Father. Hallelujah. But we have responsibilities, mothers, to show love, to show joy, to show peace, to show patience, to show kindness, to show goodness, to show faithfulness. Who's on board? Who wants to exhibit that, that God has put upon us, that is available to receive 
Someone wants to receive the hate. Someone wants to receive the cursing and the fussing and the acting up. Someone wants to ruin their day and everyone else's because somebody insulted them, upset them, and once again did something that they didn't like. Can we just turn all of that over to the one true God right now? Somebody pause the message and pray like never before. All of your frustration, all of your upset concerning sons and daughters, husbands, Lord Jesus, the workplace, the church. Help us, help us, oh Heavenly Father. Help us. Our children need us. Our children need to see good examples. Our children are going to one day be parents, Lord Jesus. We don't want them looking back upon us and saying that, oh, cursed be. Instead, we want them to say, blessed be. And we want you, O Heavenly Father, in our last days to say, O good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for what you're about to do in this listener's life. Thank you, O Heavenly Father. Meet her where she is in her lack. Meet her where she is in her upset. Meet her where she is concerning all sorts of issues that she got herself entangled in. Meet her where she is right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke. We renounce. We denounce. Spirits of iniquity. Jealousy condemnation, pride, arrogance, vanity, greed. We come against spirits, Jezebel, Ahab, Italia. We come against spirits of lies, confusion, favoritism, narcissism we come against witchcraft warlock incubus succubus types of spirits in and around we come against gambling worshiping of idols drunkenness all sorts of sexual perversions. We come against all of these things in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are loved. And God is going to see you through this time of much difficulty. There are those who this is not a season of celebration for them. It's a season of sorrow. Lord Jesus, comfort the hearts of those who have lost their mothers and grandmothers, their spiritual mothers, their adopted mothers. Bring about healing, peace, comfort, like never before. Year after year, something happens that triggers them. Year after year, there are those who feel like they need to commemorate, but it only brings them down. Lord Jesus, release them right now. And instead, put in them A simple appreciation, a love that they have, but one that does not confine or bind. There are too many that are in bondage because you're still holding on to the memories in a way that is not releasing you. 
from the past. Surround yourself with those things that your mother, your grandmother would have wanted that would propel you forward, not keep you enslaved to them, not keep you wanting for them. It won't be long before you'll see an eternal life if you stay with the one true God. So don't use your last days grieving. That's not what God calls us to do when people leave this earth. He tells us move on because I got something greater for you. And I got tools that can help you move on. And for some of you all, the therapist is there. The counselor is there. The priest is there. The spiritual mother is there. God wants to raise up someone new to help you, but you don't want to receive the light. You rather stay in the darkness of grief and depression and sadness. That's not what I want for my listeners who come through here. And that's not what you should want for yourself, one who's grieving. We give our tears over to the one true God. I lost my grandmother. I lost my mother. I gave it over to the one true God. I said, this burden of grief is too heavy for me to carry. And no, I'm not going to be going to cemeteries and putting flowers and all this time and time again, because that doesn't bring me peace. See, you got to know what brings you peace. And for some of you all, that doesn't bring you peace. That's what somebody else does. But you know what you need to do to bring you peace and that is to let go and let God. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for you are worthy to be praised. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for bringing this person to this channel so that they could get a word of inspiration and encouragement on being a better mother. We can't be better mothers and grandmothers if we're holding on to the past and letting that past enslave us We just cannot be. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Take that moment to praise him. Hallelujah. Because when the praises go up, what happens? The blessings come down. You got that right. Glory be to the heavenly father who has made both heaven and earth. As I'm recording this message, the sun is getting a little bit brighter. Hallelujah. Glory be, glory be, you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all of your life. I thank you as always for listening. Blessings to you, mothers. Have a great season. Know that God is with you every step of the way. Please do check the description box for anything that is of interest. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. I am a wife, a mother of four. I am the owner of When Mothers Cry.blogspot.com. I've also written a book, When Mothers Cry. Feel free to check that book out. Thank you.